Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. Now usually at the end of a week we do a video looking at some of the games that are coming out for the Switch in the upcoming week. We took a break from the series for a couple of weeks over Christmas and today's video was going to start it back up. But I'll be honest, having looked at the games that are coming out next week, January is always a dry month and there is nothing on there worth talking about for next week. So what I'm going to do for this week instead is look at some of the games that came out over the Christmas period that we never covered in a video such as this owing to that aforementioned break. There were actually some decent games that came out over Christmas or in the first week or so of this month, some of which we have reviewed actually, so if we have done so the links to those reviews will be in the top pinned comment. Ok with all that said then, let's have a look at some of the games that have come out for the Switch in this last couple of weeks. The first game then came out just after Christmas, this is called The Innsmouth Case. This is selling for £13.49 but it does have 35% off of that price up until the 27th for this month. This is a text adventure game and is said to combine horror and comedy. Now Innsmouth is a fictional town created by author H.P. Lovecraft and was used in certainly one of his stories, possibly more, I'm not entirely sure, I think it was referenced in others. This is a detective story where you are looking for a missing child. Every decision you make has a lasting effect on the story. There are 27 different endings to find and this game actually has very good scores elsewhere. Its Metacritic rating is pretty high and it's also reviewed well on Steam. I must be honest, I absolutely love text-based adventure games. It's a genre that's died out over the years to an extent. The only thing that puts me off slightly is the mention of comedy. For my personal tastes, comedy and horror together very rarely works, although there have of course been some noticeable exceptions to this over the years. An American Werewolf in London, for example, is a fantastic film. But for me to get on board with it, it needs to be done very well. Or fail miserably. Not once, not twice, not thrice, not... How many endings are there? 27? Wow! Next up is a digital representation of a very well-known board game called Wingspan. In this game, up to five players compete in trying to build up a nature preserve. You need to try and attract the best birds to your preserve, and there are 170 different birds within the game. To be fair, there are some fantastic versions of real-life board games available on the Switch, plus it does come with online play, which in this current climate may be ideal for people that can't get in one room to get around a board and play a game like this for real. Species. Help them lay eggs. Gain food. A game that came out about a week ago now, give or take, this is Cthulhu Saves Christmas. Another game based on HP Lovecraft's characters. This is published by Limited Run and I do believe this is getting a physical release via them as well. This is a turn-based RPG with comedy elements where you play as Cthulhu who has lost his powers and the only way to get them back is by rescuing Santa Claus from the League of Christmas Evil. Judging by the blurb, it contains a host of other characters from folklore or popular culture. It mentions Bell Snickle and Baba Yaga. And once again, it has very high scores elsewhere. Its Metacritic score is in the 80s, for example. It does mention that it's quite a short experience, ranging from about 4 to 5 hours, and sells for £11.39. But if you're looking for something short and sweet, this may well be the one for you. One that we have reviewed now, this one came out last week, and it's a game called Iris Fall. In this game you will be taking on a variety of puzzles, some 2D based and some 3D based, and all having some sort of mechanic that revolves around light and shadow. It may be moving objects in the foreground to create a shadow on the wall for your shadow to pass through, or manipulating Rubik's cubes full of light to then shine a light on the door to show the way forward. It sells for £15.29 or your regional equivalent, and if you do want to know more, as I said, please do check out that link to the review in the top pinned comment. Next, another one that came out just last week. This is Sense, a cyberpunk ghost story. This is a 2.5D point and click game, I suppose would be the best way to describe it, with its setting and story fusing together both cyberpunk and horror, as you would expect by that title. It's set in Neo Hong Kong in 2083, where you play as a young woman who is about to uncover the supernatural horror behind a century old mystery. I've heard contrasting views about this game, some say it tells quite an interesting story, whereas others I've heard say it's quite clunky and a little drab. 
But it came out last week nonetheless if you are interested and I'm pretty sure I've heard it's getting a physical release via East Asia Soft and will be available on Play Asia's website. A game that released a couple of days ago, this is Wrestling Empire. Now I'm going to be honest, I know nothing about wrestling. If you asked me to name five wrestlers, I could give you Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, The Rock because he's in basically every film ever these days, and now I'm struggling, three out of five. But what I do know from people that have spoken about this game is the reason it's got a bit of hype about it is because it harkens back to the N64 wrestling games. Again, I didn't play them, I wasn't into wrestling, but I know from friends of mine they were very good and are kind of seen as the heyday of video game wrestling. What I can also tell you though, and this may be of interest to some of you looking at this game, is that it does have a demo on the eShop, so you can at least try before you buy. And if you have played the game, perhaps you can put in the comment section if it's any good for those curious about buying it. Right back on more comfortable and familiar territory for me for the next one, this is Double Dragon Neon. Now this came out just before Christmas in the US, so it has been out a little while, but it's only just released in other regions. I'm talking within the last day or so. This is a beat em up of course, part of the famous Double Dragon franchise, and this particular game came out in 2012 originally, and was a remake, reboot of the first Double Dragon game. It uses a 3D art style and has quite an interesting and fairly deep combat system, which sees you collecting cassettes, which then power your character up. This is another one of the games that has been reviewed on the channel, so again if you do want to watch that review, the link is in the top pinned comment. Next is one that at the time of this video is only available on the North American store, this is Demo Reborn. Now Demo is a rhythm game that's already on the Switch and this Reborn edition, as far as I understand, is a 3D remake of that particular game. Now I don't know much about the series so if you do know more please do let us know in the comments section, but I must say that I always thought that the 2D artwork in the Demo game was absolutely beautiful and wouldn't have said it needed remaking, but there you go. Again, having looked online, it also looks as if the Reborn version was available elsewhere in VR, and of course this Switch version is not. It's selling for $25, which is slightly cheaper than the original. Then we have one that came out just before Christmas, but stealth dropped at the time, so it was never in one of these videos. This is Fatal Fury First Contact. This is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, part of the Fatal Fury series of course, and released for the Neo Geo Pocket Color back in 1999. It's based on Real Bout Fatal Fury 2, and is actually quite a fun game, I've been playing it recently. There are 10 characters from the series to choose from, and I'm led to believe there are two unlockables as well, one of which is new for this particular game. It's a simplified version, as you would expect, bearing in mind the system it came out for, and actually plays very well, I was quite pleasantly surprised in how fluid the combat is. It is a little slow as you would expect and it is definitely easier than the arcade versions and its main problem really is that at £7.19 or your regional equivalent you can buy the Fatal Fury or any other of SNK's arcade fighters on the Switch for less money. If you enjoyed it back in the day though on the Pocket Color this might be a nice little nostalgia trip and I am planning to review this game fully in a multi-review video with a few other games that don't quite need a full review for themselves in the next week or so. And the final game for this video then, one that releases on the day that I'm actually recording this video, the 14th of January, and one that many people, including myself, were looking forward to, this is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the game Complete Edition. This is a re-release of the game that came out in 2010 and was on the digital stores of the PS3 and the Xbox 360, but was delisted in 2014. This Complete Edition includes all of the DLC that released for that game back in the day, which means you're getting some extra playable characters, the ability to play online, and a couple of mini-games thrown in for good measure. 
It is of course a beat em up based on the Scott Pilgrim graphic novels and released to coincide with the movie back in 2010 as I said and to be honest is one of the best in the genre. Now again this is one we have reviewed and again the link is in the top pin comment if you want to have a look. Perhaps if you missed the game first time round and want to know what it's all about or if you played and loved it back then but are just excited for its re-release and want to see how it holds up after all these years. So there you have it then, 10 games that have released on the Switch in this last couple of weeks between the last upcoming video we did and this latest video here, 10 games that may well have escaped your attention. Now I've looked at the eShop for the next couple of weeks and it does look as if we're going to start getting some decent games again soon. I couldn't do it on this week's games, it was appalling. But the series should go back to its usual format of upcoming games and any stealth drops that missed the previous week's video, touch wood, going from next week onwards. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this slightly tweaked format for this one video. Please do remember to leave a like if you did. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe of course, and until next time, happy gaming.